Welcome to the Four Bells. We are doing workout from home at number 59 today. Today's focus is an upper body pressing focus. We're going to look at push ups again. So, for those of you guys who really struggle with push ups at home, or not even at home, just push ups generally, you have an opportunity now to work on them at home. And if you are lucky enough to have a very fancy home gym setup, you might even be bench pressing today as well. So take some time to think about the thing that you really need to work on. Is it bench press? Do you really need to work on your bench press? Or could you spend some time working on your push-ups? So I implore you to work on the thing you actually need to work on, not the thing you would like to do most today. When we're looking at our warm-up to get us ready, we need to get those shoulders ready for pushing today. We're gonna to do three things three times. We're gonna start with some shoulder circles. There's a whole bit different gambit of shoulder circles we could be doing for mobility. We're going to cover a few of those very quickly. From there we're going to do some shoulder taps, 10 slow, 10 fast. And the idea behind those is making sure we get the shoulder stabilizers and the abs warmed up a little bit as well. And then from there we're going to look at my favorite push-up variation, the Hindu push-up, that we're going to be keeping those nice and easy in the warm-up today to make sure that we don't fatigue ourselves too much before we get into that strength piece. So we're going to do these three things three times. So when it comes to shoulder circles, what should we be doing? You can do it in all manner of super easy ways and super complex ways. So you can start with a very simple shoulder circle, just one arm, what is known in chiropractic circles as a controlled articular rotation, imagining I've got my arm next to a wall, or even standing next to a wall, and just seeing if I can move that arm without too much compensation throughout the body. From there, we can do both arms backwards in big circles, and of course, forwards is also available. From there, we can do one arm forwards, one arm backwards, change direction. We can do one arm across, one arm backwards. There's tons of things you could be doing. So I would say pick one of those variations and make sure if you're doing a single arm variation that we do them for at least 30 seconds per side. Or if you're doing both arms together, just 30 seconds is enough. From there, when we're looking at shoulder taps, one way to think about is one, if I'm getting into a plank position, is where should my feet be if I know I'm gonna be on one hand? And the answer is get those feet a little bit wider. So that means if I have the hand shoulder width, I'm going to have the feet approximately about the same width as well. From there, I'm going to squeeze the floor, grip the floor, and be a slow tap for 10. So that means a full second with the hand on the shoulder. And once I've done 10 slow, it's 10 fast. Nice and slow, and then nice and fast. When it comes to the Hindu push-up, you should know by now that the four bells, we have four levels for the Hindu push-up. We can stick with levels one and two, arguably the two easiest. When I start off, I want to have my bum back to my heels, arms extended very similar to child's pose in yoga, and I'm going to keep my nose pretty high up off the mat. I pull myself forwards, bringing the hips to the floor, I push up, I drive the toes down, hips up to the ceiling, really trying to open the shoulders. It's an upper body day, so let's focus on opening the shoulders. Knees down, butt back. And if that's super easy, maybe I'm bringing the forearms down, maybe that nose is just scraping the floor, still keeping that transition smooth over the hands as we push up, dig the toes in, hips up to the ceiling. So for our warm up, we're gonna do 30 seconds of some kind of shoulder rotation, get the shoulders nice and lubricated. From there, looking at shoulder stability, 10 slow shoulder taps and then 10 fast. And from there, five Hindu push-ups. We're doing those three things for three rounds in the warm-up today. For the strength piece today, we are looking at some kind of horizontal pushing. So does that mean we're doing bench press? If we're lucky enough to maybe have a squat rack or a barbell or a bench or maybe even a big range of dumbbells to bench press with today. And if we are deciding to do bench press, we're going to be doing 10 reps today. If I'm not doing bench press, but I don't have all that equipment available, we should be looking at some kind of push-up. But as I mentioned in the preamble to this workout, am I doing bench press because I'm trying to avoid push-ups? If you are a person who's very good at absolute strength work, so move the external object, but you're someone who's not very good at relative strength work, move your body, maybe we should be thinking about spending some time working on the things that we are not necessarily the best at today. So I implore you to think carefully before you decide what you want to do today. So if I'm doing bench press, as I said, I'm going to be doing 10 reps. And if I don't have a bench press setup available, then I'm looking at what kind of push-up am I doing? Am I doing a scaled version of a push-up, which could be on the stairs, could be on the floor, could be on the edge of my couch, could be somewhere where I'm slightly elevated. Of course, that's not the floor. 
Or am I doing push-ups actually on the floor? And if I can do them on the floor, are regular push-ups too easy for me? Do I need to move to a diamond push-up or a harder variation? And if I'm a real push-up ninja, am I looking at one-arm push-ups and some variations of those today as well? So, once I've done my bench press or my push-ups, we're then gonna do some Y raises today. So an exercise for the rear delts and the low traps, trying to balance out the shoulder and give us as much shoulder health as possible, where we're gonna do 10 reps per arm. And we don't need super crazy weights with this. I'd say probably 10, maybe not even, somewhere between five to 15 pounds is probably the heaviest you need to be going when you're doing Y raises today. So either way, we're gonna alternate back and forth with these guys for five sets. Each piece has got 90 seconds, which means we've got five three minute sets. Let's have a look at how to perform all of the exercises here. If we are lucky enough to bench press today, first of all, obviously you need a bench. Do you have a regular bench? Do you have an adjustable bench? Either way, what tools do I then get to use? If I'm on a straight bar, of course, all I would say to everyone is if you are benching along with a straight bar, don't go too heavy. You don't want to be the person who is known as the guy or girl or person who died in their basement because they went a bit too heavy and then had to play the human xylophone over their own rib cage. With that in mind, if you're doing it with a barbell, be careful. If you're doing it with dumbbells, fantastic. A little bit easier to let go of if things go wrong. But what we always need to think about is set up for both of those positions. We could get into a huge lecture about how to get ready for bench press. Let's go over some of the very quick setup points of performance. Which means if I'm laying down on my bench, I'm going to set my hands up first of all, make sure they're nice and even. The width of my hands is going to be directly correlated to how healthy my shoulders are. So if I've got banged up shoulders, it's probably better to be a much closer position when I'm bench pressing. It'll overload the tricep that save the shoulders. If I've got shoulders that are relatively happy, I can afford to move those hands out a little bit. So for me, I know my little finger comes to the first smooth ring here. I'm not a power lifter anymore, so I don't need to be going maximal legal grip anymore. So I'm going to set it up. I'm going to rest the upper body on the traps. As you can see, I've got my rib cage flared slightly. I've got an arch in the low back. I'm going to bring my feet back, drive the heels down, squeeze the butt, make sure there's tension through the legs. And we do a nice arm racking of the bar. Let it settle in the shoulder. From here, we come down, touching the chest, and from there, push back up. So of course, we're trying to do 10 reps, and ideally, if we can, we should be thinking across those five sets, can I be getting progressively heavy? If we're doing push-ups today, it says five to 10, which is a fairly wide rep range. We're looking from like a power rep range, touching on a hypertrophy or muscle building rep range. What we're really trying to do here in terms of intention is if I can do reps eight, nine, and 10 with relative ease, I'm trying to find a harder variation for my push-up. Either way, outside of that, what do we need to be thinking about shoulder, elbow, shoulder health-wise? As always, I should be thinking the hand should be about shoulder width. If I imagine I was holding onto a barbell, I'm trying to bend that barbell. So that external rotation puts the shoulder in a nice healthy position, you get the lats to stabilize the shoulder, and you're going to find the pivot of your elbow is going to point away from you, and the point of your elbow is going to point down towards your hips. So that means whether I am on a bench performing this, or maybe the edge of the stairs, or the edge of my couch, or the trunk of my car, wherever it happens to be, or boot of your car if you're English, it should look exactly the same, whether I'm elevated slightly, or if I'm just doing a regular push-up on the floor. And of course, if we're heading into one-arm push-up territory, then we should be thinking from here, and something we're building on from last week, is can I bring the hand out to the side and then can I start bringing the hand down towards the hip? So that means even if I am doing that, this arm still is the working arm. So that means even if I'm bringing the hand out to the side, I'm still trying to keep that shoulder and elbow close to the body as I perform the rep on this arm and this guy does as little as possible. So if I'm bench pressing today, 10 reps, trying to get a little bit heavier if we can. If I'm doing regular push-ups, five to 10, Again, if I can do eight, nine, and 10, make it harder. That means lowering it down, finding a harder push-up variation. Or if I'm doing one-arm push-up variations, it should be very taxing. I'm just doing five per arm. The Y raise is a fantastic exercise for shoulder health. It gets to really attack an area of musculature that is very rarely seen by a lot of people and usually very weak and usually inactive. And that is the low traps. The low traps are a major player in shoulder health, shoulder function, and good postural position. So it means that when we're trying to do things like bench press and push-ups, 
which are things that have an internal rotation nature, we've all seen that bro pose, we're trying to get into a position of external rotation, have a nice happy shoulder position. So with the single arm Y raise, I'm trying to be half of the Y in YMCA. I'm just looking to be one part of the Y. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm going to hinge forwards, but I'm just going to rest my arm on maybe the edge of the couch, back of the chair, dining room table, anywhere where I can kind of rest my arm and just focus on the moving side. I'm going to hinge forwards, and all I'm going to do is retract the shoulder, raise up into the Y, and then control down. Relax the shoulder, pull the shoulder back, raise up into the Y, and then come back down. Relax, retract, raise it up. We don't need crazy heavy weights to perform this. This is a five pound dumbbell. I think the heaviest maybe I've ever done is like 15 pounds. I mean, it's not to get a little bit sloppy. But of course, if you're at home with very limited resources, you can get a lot done with just a nice can of chickpeas or a small kitten, whichever you want to use. Either way, we're doing 10 reps on our second strongest side first, and then our first strongest side. And coupling that with our push-ups today is for a very powerful and also healthy strength piece. The conditioning piece today, <laughs> easy for me to say, is a fun endeavor that involves a lot of shoulders and a lot of abs. It's almost like it's upper body day and we're getting serious about it. It's very simple. Today we have three rounds. In each round we have four one minute stations and each minute is 45 seconds of work followed by 15 seconds of rest. So in minute number one, we're going to do some Z press today or Z press, depending on how you like to pronounce it and where you're from. You only need a pair of light weights to do this ideally, or maybe you've just got an empty barbell. That would work very well too. From there, with Tuck V Up, a fantastic exercise for the abs as well as for the hip flexors, you just need a mat. From there, bear crawling, everyone's favorite thing to do in the gym, you don't need a lot of space. So people who say to me, oh, I can't do bear crawls, I have enough space. I guarantee you, you have enough space. And last but not least, what are we doing last? Oh, squat thrust. The burpee without the push-up. That's what we used to call them when I was at school, when I was a wee lad. So we're gonna go over how to do squat thrusts as well. So the idea is within each 45 seconds of work is we're just trying to move consistently. We're not kind of trying to come out at a super crazy intense pace. We will blow up very fast. The idea is trying to move consistently and then a nice quick transition in the rest period, rest period, and then we're just gonna keep it moving for 12 delightful minutes. With the Z-Press, as I said, Two dumbbells is all you need. I'm gonna sit in a straddle position, so that way my legs aren't helping me. I'm gonna keep the abs tight, and all I'm gonna do is press overhead. So just try and press continually for 45 seconds. Very simple. If you're done with a barbell, you're gonna find that with a barbell, because you're in a fixed hand position on that bar, it's gonna be a little bit harder for you if you've got tough mobility overhead. From there, with the tuck V up, I don't need to go anywhere. Just lay down the nicest part of today's workout. All I'm going to do is have hands on the floor, heels on the floor. We sit up and I'm going to draw that in a balance, almost like I'm in that boat pose from yoga. Heels come down, hands come down, and we're just going to rip it out. From there, bear crawls. Some people in the gym do not care for crawling very much. And the reason for that is, it's just us trying to develop new movement patterns where maybe we haven't been moving that way since we were a kid. So for a lot of people to be like, why are we doing this? I don't like bear crawls. The main reason is to try and develop that vestibular system, that basis of movement patterns. So that means I'm moving opposite hand, opposite leg as I bear crawl. You can either do it with a higher bear crawl, which means bum in the air, straight legs. You can do it low bear crawl, so knees lower. But of course you can go forwards or you can go backwards. Whatever works best for you. Last but not least, the squat thrust. Super simple to do, but simple does not always mean easy. All it means is we put the hands down, almost like I'm in a little squat. Feet out, feet in, stand up. That's it. Hands down, feet out, feet in, stand up. Three rounds, four one minute stations. We're doing Z press, tuck feet ups, bear crawls, squat thrusts for a 12 minute conditioning piece. Enjoy, let us know how you go.